If you've ever seen a construction site up close, or even just pass by one, you probably noticed the steel rods sticking out of foundations or lying in bundles waiting to be laid. Those rods are called rebar, short for reinforcing bar, and they're absolutely essential to modern construction. But here's something you may not have given much thought to. Some of those steel rods are completely smooth, while others have that ribbed or deformed texture along their length. Is it just a manufacturing quirk, a design choice, or is there a deeper reason behind why some rebar looks like it's been gnawed on by a metal-loving beast, while others are sleek and smooth like steel spaghetti? This seemingly simple difference actually reveals a lot about how we make buildings strong, safe, and long-lasting. So today, let's crack open the world of reinforced concrete and find out why rebar comes in different styles and what that means for the stuff we walk on, live in, and drive over every single day. Right here on History of Simple Things. Before we talk ribs and ridges, let's start with the basics. Rebar is used to reinforce concrete. Now, concrete by itself is strong in terms of compression. It can handle heavy vertical loads without much problem. Think of a concrete column holding up a bridge. Push down on it, and it resists that force beautifully. But concrete has a weak spot, tension. If you try to bend it or pull it apart, it cracks pretty easily. That's where rebar steps in. Steel is excellent at handle and tension. So when we bury steel bars inside concrete, the two materials form a kind of super team. Concrete handles the squeezing, and steel takes care of the stretching and pulling forces. But here's the catch. For this partnership to work, the rebar and the concrete need to stay locked together. They can't be slipping past each other when the structure flexes. Imagine trying to glue a rubber band onto a block of ice. If the glue isn't strong enough or the surfaces don't grip, you'll have a problem. That's where the shape of the rebar starts to matter. Smooth rebar is actually the original design. Back in the early days of reinforced concrete, late 19th century, early 20th century, Steel rods were mostly smooth. They were easy to manufacture and easier to cut and bend on site. But as builders started pushing the limits of what concrete structures could do, taller buildings, longer bridges, more complex forms, they began running into a problem. The bond between smooth steel and hardened concrete wasn't always strong enough under serious stress. The steel could begin to slip inside the concrete, leading to cracks and even failure. That doesn't mean smooth rebar disappeared, though. It's still used today, but its role is more limited. You'll often find smooth bars used for dowels and expansion joints, those small gaps in pavements or sidewalks that allow for movement due to temperature changes. In those cases, you want the bar to be able to slide a little to accommodate movement without breaking. Smooth rebar is also sometimes used in temporary structures or in light-duty applications where the tension forces aren't as intense. So while it may look like the plain Jane of the rebar world, smooth rebar still has a job. It's just not the one carrying the weight of the world, literally. Now let's talk about the star of the show, ribbed or deformed rebar. When you look closely, you'll see that these bars have raised patterns, often in a helical or crisscross style. These ribs aren't for decoration. They're all about grip. They create mechanical interlock with the concrete, preventing the bar from slipping when forces act on the structure. Imagine trying to pull a stick out of a block of cement. If the stick is smooth, it'll come out much easier. But if it's got ridges and bumps, it's going to resist being pulled. That's exactly the principle behind ribbed rebar. The ribs dramatically improve what engineers call bond strength between the steel and concrete. In fact, 
Ribbed rebar is so effective at this that modern building codes in many countries actually require its use in structural components. And the ribs aren't random. They follow strict design standards in terms of depth, spacing, and angle. There's a lot of engineering behind those little bumps, believe it or not. There are also different types of ribbed rebar. Some have continuous spiral patterns, while others have interrupted ribs or varying angles. Each design serves a slightly different purpose and works better in different concrete applications. But the goal remains the same, making sure the steel doesn't budge when the concrete starts to shift or flex under pressure. Why not just always use ribbed rebar? Good question. If ribbed rebar is stronger and safer, why bother with smooth bars at all? Well, it comes down to application, cost, and sometimes convenience. Ribbed rebar is more expensive to produce, and not every part of a structure needs the kind of tension support that ribbed bars provide. For example, if you're connecting two concrete slabs and you want them to move independently due to temperature or ground settling, you want the steel to be able to move a bit inside the concrete. That's when smooth rebar becomes the better choice. In some manufacturing processes, smooth bars are easier to handle or cut. Plus, when temporary reinforcement is needed, say for formwork that will be removed later, using cheaper smooth bars makes economic sense. It's all about choosing the right tool for the job rather than assuming one solution fits all. So next time you pass a construction site and you see a pile of steel rods, some ribbed, some smooth, you'll know there's more going on than meets the eye. What might look like a simple piece of metal is actually the backbone of our cities. And whether it's ribbed or smooth isn't just aesthetic, it's a calculated engineering decision. The choice between ribbed and smooth rebar boils down to how much grip is needed, what kind of stress the structure will face, and even how much it's going to move over time. Every little ridge you see is a quiet assurance that the buildings we live and work in can stand the test of time, weight, and weather. It's easy to overlook something so ordinary, but without that twisted, ridged steel skeleton hidden beneath our streets and structures, the concrete jungle would fall apart, one smooth slip at a time. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.